this guy, this guy after college, this guy after college could have written, he gets a little embarrassed of this, but truth is, this guy after college could have written his ticket to Wall Street or any place in the nation, any place in the world. But instead he decided he was going to go to the streets of Chicago, the south side of Chicago. The very places where literally like all of you have experienced in this state, where the steel plant had just closed down, where a neighborhood, a neighborhood was in distress. And one of the things he did was very simple, the best way for me to explain it. He made the lives of those people he met there, he made that the work of his life in the community, in the Senate. And that's exactly what he'll do as your president. He'll make their lives his life. You know, I ran in the primaries, this fella, and I saw something incredible. I saw something you all saw. I was working like the devil. I was working hard, and I got people were being really nice. I don't mean to, I, this is literally true. And I saw something I had never, ever, ever seen before. I watched the guy tap into, just by his very being, his bearing, and his ideas, tap into the age-old American belief that many have forgotten. And that is, you don't have to accept a situation you cannot bear. You can change it. You can change it. And changing it is exactly what Barack Obama and I will do as President and Vice President of the United States. I think I should let you go and not do the rest of it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, that's right. You can. One thing I want to mention to you, I want to get something straight here. I supposedly, uh, you know, I supposedly know something about foreign policy. I love these guys all of a sudden call me this big expert. Let me tell you something else I observed. And John McCain talks about, you know, John, that, that Barack is not ready. Let me just tell you something. Where I come from, the neighborhood I come from, you measure people in their deeds and not their words. Let's just do a little comparison here. I want to just, I want to make just two points here because I want you to hear Barack and I want to get out of the way here. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to point out a couple things. John McCain, let's see who's right about these things. John McCain said just about, uh, about three years ago, he said, you know, there's a reason we don't read, I'm paraphrasing, the reason we don't read about Afghanistan in the newspaper anymore, it has succeeded. Now, wait a minute. Barack Obama, Barack Obama, in the United States Senate and the campaign trail, well over a year ago said, we desperately need to add, get two more combat battalions to Afghanistan because if we don't, we may lose it. Now, wait a minute now. Listen, what happened? I mean, those mountains between Afghanistan and Pakistan are where Al-Qaeda lives. That's where the Taliban is. That's where bin Laden is. And no less than the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States military validated what Barack said by saying, and I want to make sure I quote him correctly, he said, getting more troops there now is, quote, an urgent requirement. Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Obama was right. John McCain was wrong. John McCain said famously, why would we want to talk to Iran? What do we have to talk about? Barack Obama said that let me tell you something. We better talk to Iran, make clear that they need to change their conduct and let them know what will happen if they don't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after, after seven years of denial, what did the Bush administration do just a month ago? It went to talk to Iran. Why? because they know that's the way to enhance our security. John McCain was wrong and Barack Obama was right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you one more example. These are the major, major security issues of the day. John McCain said, it, we should not talk about a timeline. We should not, not talk about any plan as to how we'll draw our troops down. And he went on to say, we'll stay there if it takes 100 years. 
Well, Barack Obama said something a while ago that wasn't very popular. He had the courage to say it. He stood up and he said, look, we have to set a timeline to draw down. Our we have to shift responsibility to the Iraqis, set a timeline and bring our combat troops home. Now, after six years, as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, I'm about to have an agreement handed to me that we're going to have to vote on that is an agreement between George W. Bush and the Iraqi government that says we're going to set a timeline to bring our troops home. Barack Obama was right and John McCain was wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly honored. I'm truly honored to join Barack in this historic race. This is a race of great consequence for our generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been reminded forcefully when I looked at Barack's kids and my grandkids at that convention why I joined this ticket. I joined this ticket for them. I joined this ticket for everybody I grew up with in Scranton and Wilmington, Delaware. I joined this ticket. I joined this ticket for the cops and the firefighters, the teachers and the assembly line workers. I joined this ticket for the folks whose everyday lives are the measure of whether the American dream is still alive. And I want to tell you one thing. Like you, the American people are ready. I am ready. Barack Obama is ready. Ready to get back up and... Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Barack Obama.